we'll be back after an open week, which we desperately needed. Our guys uh, got, a lot of, got some rest. We went back to spring practice and worked on drills and fundamentals because we're not a football team that uh, we have the capability of being at this point. You never are, so uh, we wanted to go back to a lot of things after self-scouting that we thought we needed to improve on. We needed to get some guys healthy, get their legs back. We've got, we've got a few guys back that did not play in the last game. That's encouraging. Get close to the midway point after this game, and uh, hopefully we can shake the injury bug and uh, be a little bit more uh, on the lucky side of that part in the next half of the season. But we did work hard last week, very physical practices, worked on depth. Put a few new things in on offense and defense that we thought might help as we get into the second half of the season. And uh, excited about where we are again on uh, on our injury status. Uh, going back to the Miami game a little bit, that was a big win for us, a big win for the program. I think we built some confidence, but we really didn't play that much better than we did in the games that we lost. We just didn't turn the ball over. Uh, that was the whole key. We played. Uh, hard in every game. We played smart in most every game. We just turned the ball over and missed a few tackles. Now, we did miss tackles in the Miami game. That's probably the most athletic team that we'll play. But, uh, you know, just considering how we began the season on defense and where we got, I think we really improved defensively to that point. But again, offensively, we, we played well all year long and we just turned the ball over. And then special teams, we didn't make that stupid mistake that we've made in the, in the two or three previous games to that point. So now getting to this point, uh, we've had good practices. We've, uh, we're gonna have uh, fresh legs. Yesterday was our last real physical practice. Next three days before we go to uh, uh, Provo, Utah, we will have a lot of walkthroughs, a lot of film. Uh, we have to get everybody ready to go, not just for this game, but try to keep them as fresh as we can going into the next six conference games after this. BYU is a team I'm very familiar with. I've coached against them before, coached against them in Provo. Uh, it's, it's kind of funny, you know, Lavelle Edwards really started the passing game in college football years ago, and they haven't changed much. They're keeping, they're doing the same things. I guess this guy's either played under him or coached <coughs> under him uh, when he was there. Lavelle, very good friend, and just talking football with him over the years, you know, he was kind of a guy along with Bill Walsh, a guy that really got, got the passing game going to, to the point of, you know, taking advantage of what people do on the other side of the ball. So, that being said, uh, they're well-schooled. These kids go, go there, know what kind of offense they're going to be in, and they learn every day, you know, the basics of the same offense that they'll run the entire time. And that's what makes for winners. That, that makes you a very good football team when you, you grow up in the system, understand it, and you can execute better than the defense can execute against you. Defensively, they're a little different. They four-man front, three-man front. They run around, they make plays. They're very aggressive and a very physical football team. They uh, play one of the most horrendous schedules that I've ever seen a team have to play. Uh, they play some very good teams at home, very good teams on the road. Uh, they are very unlucky to the point where they lost their uh, quarterback that was a good, very good quarterback at the beginning of the season to the same injury, a broken foot or leg. And now they've got a young guy that's come in there that had missed a lick that's really, uh, you know, made their football team a very, very good football team uh, to this point in the season. They have lost a few games, but again, they've played some very good football teams. And they've challenged everybody. So it'll be a tough game for us. I'm excited about going after coming off the Miami win. Hopefully we take some momentum. Provo, we're going to need that. We're going to need to play our best game in front of a, a very loud crowd. Again, I've been there and I've been at games, coached at games there, and they love college football. It's a heck of a setting for college football, and uh, this will be a game against a team that's uh, well known to all college football fans across the country. Questions? Dave, uh, you've had some time off compared to them. How much of a factor is that in game? I mean, Miami last time, they had a lot of time off and you didn't, and you still won. Is that something that is, is a factor at all? It just depends on your injuries, you know, where they're at, your depth, how much depth that you've built. You know, how, 
what kind of experience that you have. You could tell last week their quarterback went down. They brought in a freshman quarterback, and there was a dramatic difference. And then he came back in the game and was able to take them on, on to the last drive and win. So it's tough. It's tough to play that many games in a row. I guess what this is seven for them uh, without a break. And last year we went, if I'm not mistaken, ten. I mean, it's a killer. It really is. And you've really got to depend a lot on your younger guys, inexperienced players, and they've got to grow up quick. But, uh, you know, they, they've been pretty pretty healthy. They've had some guys go up and down and come back, a lot like us. But, again, you, you've got to – college football, I would say at least 25 to 30% of the games are going to be won by inexperienced players because of injuries. And it's uh, just one of those situations, and that's the reason – we had this open date and we really worked hard with our young guys. We practiced them after practice and drills, working guys that we thought might end up having to be be uh, participants, you know, with this, this football team helping helping us win games down the down the stretch. Whether you're willing to share that share this with us or not, if you've had your last really hard practice, do you have a better handle who's going to play quarterback? Oh, you know, it's pretty much even. You know, I, there's not a lot of difference. <clears throat> Gunner just got cleared on Sunday. Uh, he didn't have the practices that hey, I hadn't decided yet who'll be the starting quarterback uh, to this point. Probably won't do that each week because now I feel good about both guys. Uh, our players will know who'll be the starting quarterback at the beginning of the week. I don't believe in you know guys going back and forth, one offensive line, two offensive line. But we're in a good situation now that uh, now that Gunner is cleared that. Uh, he can get back 100% and start really concentrating on on uh, being the guy. Now, is, is that going to be this week? Uh, there's really no no reason to say because you can really evaluate quarterbacks on a lot of things: their leadership, their film study, you know what they put into a game, and that'll go all into the decision of either one of these guys being the starter because they're they're so close. Gunner having more experience, but also Turning the ball over more this year. You know, Hayden being the young guy, they got off the slow start against Miami of Ohio, but really has played well in his last two games. Uh, I'm looking for a quarterback that doesn't turn the ball over, that makes good decisions. But also, uh, a lot of that happens in the film room during the week how much they study, how much they do on their own, how much they know about the other team, the personnel. And so it's going to be a very competitive situation, you know, with these two. And uh, until one of them separates, from the other. Uh, Gunner has not had the opportunity to compete against Hayden for three weeks, just the simple fact that he hadn't been cleared to go. And so now, as he's getting closer to 100%, you know, he's taken two unbelievable shots uh, in two games in a row. Uh, we wanted to make sure he's 100%. He is 100% healthy now. Uh, knowing that that's in the back of his mind, you know, he's got he to shake that off in terms of making sure he makes the right decisions on the field because those type of hits are going to come. They might might not be the type of hit that he got, but he's going to get hit. And so uh, we want to make sure that the situation is right when we uh, when we get him back in the game. It could be the start, start and drive of, of this game. But uh, we'll evaluate him for the rest of the week and how much film study they do. And Darren Henshaw and, uh, and Eddie Grant will evaluate you know, their performance in terms of the tests that they take film study, uh, you know, the performance on the practice field. And we won't have contact, but we'll still run plays, throw the football, and guys will have to make decisions once we put a defense on the other side and are they making the right decision after the ball snap or are they not making the right decision. So it's a good situation. You never really want a quarterback controversy, but this has kind of come out of the, out of the shadows. Uh, it's not something that we planned, but it is what it is. I think now we're in pretty good shape knowing we've got two guys that we feel good about, uh, about taking this football team to the next level. So are you saying you might use a different guy every week, or is that something you really want to avoid? Well, unless one of them distinguishes themselves from the other, uh, you know, we again, they will practice. Whoever's number one will start at the beginning of the week and be the number one quarterback. You know, if somebody goes in and does much better, you know, Gunner's a guy that we know what he can do. We know that I can handle the team. Again, the problem is, you know, we've all got memories of, what, four or five interceptions in the Temple game and, and the touchdown, you know, 
for seven points in the Memphis game. We can't do we can't do that. And Hayden has not done that to this point. And uh, you know, but we want each each one of them to make each other better simply by com being competitive and encouraging each other to, to help this football team win games. How much is it gonna help having Mike Boone back? Oh well it's hard to play three running backs. It really is to get in kind of a rhythm. But with a running back like Mike that's fresh, the legs are fresh, I mean he looks totally different out on the field than the other guys because they've had to carry the load. So to this point now we're gonna need three running backs and one of them's gonna get beat up a little bit and we'll end up playing two two running backs a game. But Mike is a he's good with our screen passes, open field running. Extra yardage, yards after contact, protecting the football, all those things he does right. So we're excited about him being back. He brings us to another level just for the fact that we've got a, a running back that can do a lot of what the other guys can do, but maybe a little bit more in some situations. Is he more of a breakaway threat than the other two? Yeah, he's not going to outrun a lot of people, but he does break tackles. And, uh, and Tion is, I think everybody in here will agree, how much better he's gotten this year. So I don't think there's a lot of difference. I think now it's just Mike's. Not, not as sore, beat up. He hadn't had, had to carry the ball. He just he'd been getting his leg right, and he's 100%. And so I might just see what what he can do. What's the best and worst part of having 15 days off in the middle of the season? Well, I would probably say, uh, you know, the speed of the game. You got to get back into, you know, a routine. And then the speed of the game on the field, practice, you don't see that type of speed of the game. So it's been two weeks uh, uh, Thursday that we play. And then you know, we get to you know, play another national TV game. I think that helps. We're not coming back and playing an 11 o'clock game in the morning. Uh, it's, a, it's about the same as what we've been playing, but it's just hard to get that, that edge back when you've been off for a week. But as we've told our players, I mean, this is, as good a team as we played all year that we're going to play on the road. So uh, we've got we've got no reason not to go uh, play hard, play fast, play smart. And uh, if we'll do those three things, the layoff I don't think will hurt us. But a lot of times you see teams come back from an open day and you just don't play as well. But that's the reason in practice we've had very physical practice. And uh, not just kind of standing around and going out there and jogging around without pads on. We haven't done that at all. We've, we've got about a half a spring practice in in 15 days. And uh, I've, we've done our best to get our legs back and, and uh, freshen them up a little bit. But it's hard to do that when you know you've got a lot to improve on, which we, we definitely have got a lot to improve on. Going out, out west, two hour time difference, what, what effect does that have on a football team? Well, we've been playing around 8 o'clock anyway. Most of our games have been at night at 8 o'clock, and that's what will be here, 8 or 6 out there. So that won't make a difference. Uh, the sea level it doesn't bother many people. This is, we're, not, we're not playing in Denver or one of these places where it's you know, a mile high. I think it's 4,900 feet. But it's, the weather's going to be about the same as in here, 70 degrees. It's going to get a little cooler at night, which we're used to here. So there, there, should, there shouldn't be any problem. It's just going on the road, playing in front of 70,000 people, and we haven't done that in a while. You know, that's a, the crowd noise has been going to be different. We've worked on that, worked on uh, snap counts. We've done everything that it takes to do to get ready to play it in a, in a different type of atmosphere because we've got a lot of young guys that haven't, haven't done this. Uh, it's been a, uh, our road games have been Memphis, which was a good, you know, 45, close to 50,000, but this is, it's a little different here. This is a, a few more people, and uh, they get after it. And they've won, what, the last couple in a row. And so they, they're feeling pretty good about themselves. Do you have any thoughts on Steve Spurrier? Yeah, Steve is, I hated that. I, you know, I saw that last night when I got home. And, and uh, Steve and I have become very good friends the last 20, 25 years. Uh, I've taken a lot from Steve. He's kind of been the godfather of college football in the last 25 years. He's done a lot for college football. He's a uh, uh, you know, different personality, different type of character. Uh, I'm surprised that he's getting out because I thought he had three or four more years left. He's got a wonderful, wonderful wife, and Jerry. She's at almost every practice. 
Uh, that's his life. Everybody says he plays golf. I can remember him telling me when he got out at Redskins, he said, you know, everybody else is working and I'm looking for somebody to play golf with me. It ain't no fun playing by yourself. So he gets back in it in South Carolina and did a heck of a job. South Carolina had done almost nothing until he got there and I think they had four 10-win seasons in a row. No boy can coach, heck of a football coach. And uh, you know, son coaches with him there. So a little bit surprised, you know, at this point, this time of the year, this point in the season. I know they didn't have a good good record going, but uh, I've seen him do a lot of things uh, in football. And uh, you know, college football, we're gonna miss him. He's a, he's a good guy. And uh, now he's probably on the other side of the microphone with you guys analyzing what we do. And he'll be pretty good at it. Chris Moore, is he back for this week? Chris Moore, ready to go. And uh, because Holton and Moore missed last week or two weeks ago with injuries, will Frank Bobby continue to return kicks? Uh, we hadn't decided that Frank's been working on returning kicks. Chris has been working on returning kicks. Chris is probably about 96, 97 percent, I'd say, by Friday. Uh, you know, he just had an ankle sprain. When you have that during the season, you're never going to be 100 percent if you get off of it for a month, a month and a half. Uh, so, but he's ready to go. Uh, Johnny's 90, 95 percent gets better every day. He's been practicing, running routes. Uh, we're, we're as close to what we were at the beginning of the season except for the guys like Weedy that's out, the guys that have had surgery. So uh, with Gunner back and those two guys back, and Michael Boone being back, uh, you know, we, we feel a lot better, a lot better about our situation. Going to the Miami game was serious. Um, we were really down to guys that uh, Frank was having to play, no kickoff returner, having to play backup, uh, and having to depend on uh, a couple of guys that hadn't played much at wide receiver. Guy that really stepped up for us, other than Shaq, and Shaq always plays well, and, and uh, uh, some of the other guys. Max Morrison has played unbelievable. I mean, he's been he's been our guy this year. That's you know when the clutch is there, he stepped up and made the play, and along with Shaq and the other guys. But it's just been good to see Max play like he's played, and uh, uh, you know he's had to play more reps because of guys with injuries, and he got a little beat up. He needed the rest, but he's 100% now ready to go. I just wanted to follow up one more on the quarterbacks. Um, with Gunner, there was so much expectation at the start of the year that he had this great season, maybe be Heisman, Dark Horse, that kind of thing. Obviously, as we gone the way he planned with the hits and now competition with a younger guy, how's he handling all this? You spend a lot of time around him. How's he taking all this? Not very well, and he shouldn't because he's a quarterback. And, you know, I expect him to be very competitive and, you know, he can coach when I, I, you know, got to get back in there and, and, and as I told him after you know the first week you know that was his decision uh, the second one it was mine and we were gonna make sure his health was there so he was uh, he was kind of sidelined for two weeks didn't get to throw much didn't get didn't get to much of anything not knowing you know what was gonna happen in the future and then of course now he's back just discounting what Hayden has done and the point where he's gotten us to He's fighting. I mean, he and, and he's that type of person, and uh, he wants that shot. He wants to get in there at any time, whether it's a backup, whether it's a starter. He wants to prove that those turnovers, you know, he's past that, and that's what I talked to him about. You know, the throwing and all those things. That's Eddie Grant. The turnovers. That that goes in my cat my category as head coach because you can't win turning the ball, throwing it to somebody else, looking at receivers. You got to look them off. You got to do a better job of acting as a quarterback. And so he's worked on all those things. He understands it, and uh, he's very competitive. He wants to be the starter this week. And he's working very hard to be the starter. So we'll see what happens as we, we go through the next few days.